Okay, guys, this is going to be the matchup um, against Affinity. Now, I want to start off this video and apologize. This is going to be completely uncut. Um, so any mistakes I make along the way, you just bear with me. Uh, for whatever reason, the replay did not save. So I loaded these up from the, the completed list out of the room, and as soon as I close them, they're gone forever. So you just got to bear with me on this one. So I wasn't sure it was Affinity, but it is Affinity. Um, this was a starting hand. It looked pretty good. I had the blanks, the um, the oracle, the island. I had the opportunities for a good start. You know, drawn to a two cast. You know, immediately it's affinity when they drop tree of tails. There's no other deck using that right now. Um, no, affinity is a not a great matchup for this deck. It's it's a fast aggro deck, but it's not just a fast aggro deck. What makes it so brutal is that it's fast and it's able to pile out a whole bunch of four toughness creatures on turn two. Um, you can really run into issues. Your echoing decays are only going to do minus two, minus two, so it will not kill off your mirror enforcers. It will not kill off the um, carapace forger. It will not kill off the sun chasers. Um, so you need to be aware of that. It's also important, you may be better off going into game two than you are in game one. Um, it's important to know the different versions. There's a lot of different versions of Affinity. There are some that do not run the, um, the Disciple of the Vault. There are some that do not run the Carapace Forger and will instead run Sun Chasers. Um, some that run the Forger and no Sun Chasers. Some that run both Carapace Forger and Sun Chaser. Uh, so it's really important to understand these both. Uh, one of your advantages in this is that the um, you'll see this opponent gets kind of screwed with it. He's only got thought cast. So if you do not draw into a thought cast, you empty your hand pretty fast. So if I can answer him as fast as it comes, then he's in trouble um, with no thought casts. There are some that I have seen that are running now Rush of Knowledge, which is fantastic in this deck because you'll be able to drop Mirror Enforcer for free, and then cast a Rush of Knowledge for five, um, probably much less based on, you know, tapping creatures and whatnot, but you'll be able to catch, cast that and draw seven cards off it, um, which can be really brutal. If you face a version like that, uh, you're really, you're really going to be hurting, because that's probably the one major holdback, in my opinion, at least to Affinity, is the fact that it cannot draw um, very fast. So let's see, we're going to sack the Terramorphic. I imagine that I grabbed a Swamp. Okay. Any day now. You get all of these replays. I apologize for, for these being replays and not live. Um, but I want to make sure that I, I show you guys games that are worth watching. As opposed to, um, you know, just a one-sided something where someone can see it at anything like that. I want to show a lot of different aspects to this deck. Uh, so I don't get a turn 2 draw, but I'll pull it out a uh, second Terramorphic and be able to crack that on this uh, turn for my opponent. Uh, let's just hit play and go with it. Do, do, do. Okay, so he's finally going to put out a Frogmite, 4 cost for free, taps it out, gets the Mirror Enforcer down. Now that's a pretty strong turn 2. I mean, you check that out. Turn 2, he's got a 2-2 two, two and a 4-4 four, four creature in play. Like, how many decks can pull that off? Um, I'm going to be able to play out the Seagate Oracle on my following turn, and it's going to pretty much just act as a chump blocker. Um, there's not much I can do, and I'm going to use it to, to kind of dig around for uh, any kind of answer that, that I can find at this point in time. I grab an island because I'm sitting with two blue cards in hand. Um, here comes the Oracle. And my choices are... There you go, Aqueduct and Swamp. So I got nothing out of it. Um, I'm just going to take the land that doesn't come intact because I think I'm going to need all the land as I can get on this this game. Now my opponent plays a little weird. I don't, I don't know what he was thinking. He makes some bad plays in this game, like really bad. As you'll see here in a second. He attacks, but he only uses Enforcer. If he had used the Frogmite plus Enforcer... Um, I could have chosen to block with the Oracle and keep it in play, um, but take four damage. But because he only blocks with the Enforcer, I'm able to just chump block and take nothing. And then he plays an Atog, and this is not only one of the ugliest creatures in Magic, but uh, it is one of the toughest creatures to get around in the Affinity matchup. Um, I have the four, and I cast the Deep Analysis. 
I could have evoked Maul Drifter, but I really want it as a chump blocker instead, and I have the mana to do so. But the draw gets me a snuff out. That's great. I'm going to use that to... Um, it's going to be an easy kill for for his Atog and creatures like that. Um, Atog's troublesome because it can get around your uh, Echoing Decay. You can give it minus two, minus two, but he's got a whole plethora of artifacts that he can just throw away to the Atog. Um, and get that out of the way. I play the Mull Drifter, I draw into some nice life gain, I got the Rift Watcher, I've got both Blinks in hand now, um, plus a Missionary. So I'm sitting pretty good. Uh, he does get one Thought Cast, I think it's the only one he got in both games. And I will trade the Mull Drifter for the Frog, and he gets another Atog in play. Now this is trouble, I don't have an answer for it yet, but um, I play the Rift Watcher, and I'm short on white mana. I really need a second. I, I said this in one of my other videos, if you check those out. What you really want is a second white mana. I'm going to stop this for a second. Um, a second white mana. You want a second blue. You want two of everything, so you have the ability to double cast things. Right now, I have this in play, and it's good, but it would be better if I had the white mana to play Blink. So let's look at the board right here. My opponent just played Disciple of the Vault, and this is where things get a little tricky. I'm sitting at 7 life, and I'm tapped out. I have nothing in hand. I'm not sure what he thinks I have, but no matter what he thinks I have, his play should be to immediately sacrifice all his artifacts. He's got 4, 5, 6 lands, 2 artifact um, mana producers, plus the creature. And if he sacks off his entire board, it's game over. There's no coming back for it. But he doesn't. I don't know what he thinks I have. If I have a direct kill on it, still, in response to my kill spell, he would be able to sack an additional artifact to do 7 damage. Uh, maybe his math was off on that, but he does have 9, so he has more than enough room to kill it. Even worse, he comes down, um, I play the missionary, and I kill the disciple. Now here's what I'm thinking, I don't understand this. He has a disciple in play, he still can kill me. I played the Echoing Decay, and in response, he could have sacrificed everything to the Atog and won the game. Um, but he doesn't. So, I get to kill the Disciple, and um, will eventually go to win this game. And it's really silly, because he could have had me beaten right there. He had all the pieces in place, and I don't know if he's just getting familiar with this deck, has not played it enough, um, but it, that's really a, a bad move on his part, because he cost himself the game. Um, there's some attacking going on, he tries to blast me. I blink the mission, missionary, and I'm going to be able to, you know, I'm starting to, to get that point mid-game where I've got a lot of mana. I can use these blinks repeatedly. I'll be able to flashback the, the deep analysis, and I draw another Rift Watcher, and I can keep the mana open to blink yet again. Um, I'll have the mana on my untap to blink for the momentary blink and save that Rift Watcher that's about to die. Um, again, really silly move on my opponent's part. You see he's down to only one card left in hand, and that's that's going to be just killer for him. Um, unless he gets a, another Thought Cast going, he's going to be at quite a disadvantage. I'm going to get the card draw, I'm going to get the life gain, and even though I'm down to six life, it's going to be game over. Um, now this is, this is one of the newer versions. You know, I was talking about all the different versions. Um, adding the Scourge, it does work as a one-cause creature, and it's great in the early game. Um, I guess in the mid-game, it it can help you with some life gain, but it's still, I, I don't like this this version of the deck. I have seen it before um, on a couple DE lists, but it's not, I don't, I don't think it's as strong as the deck. Like I said, it's, it's much harder to get through those um, those Carapace Forgers or the Sun Chasers, which have the evasion. Uh, there's not a lot of decks that can handle that 4 power, 4 toughness. Alright, here I get the Serrated Arrows. I can use it to kill the Atog. Um, it's going to be, because it is minus one, minus one counters, um, they stay on him, and no matter how many artifacts he sacks, eventually that end of turn is going to come, and that's going to die. Um, so I, I make it a chance, I block with the, the missionary, and thinking he may decide to just let it die, and I can save a counter from my arrows, but he doesn't. Um, but I'm more than happy to, to use that counter on the arrows to, to kill it out. Now I've run into a bit of a stall here, sitting on four lands... I've used all of my Terramorphics, so I cannot draw any more lands. Um, I've gotten all the basics out of there, so this Evolving Wild is going to be just a dead card. I figure I might as well bounce the bog, I can remove it. I know there there isn't any Graveyard Recursion or Flashback in most Artifact Affinity decks, so I can let that go. Um, I'm eventually, too, going to find an answer for the Enforcer. 
Uh, but right now I'm just taking some damage. Uh, the Rift Watcher is gonna, you know, be able to get in one last hit here before he has to go. So it's gonna be, you know, okay. He's gonna be down to 12. I got rid of his life gain, and we just move on from there. Um, Oh, you can see there I, I accidentally skipped over my attack. Um, but it works because I can block the Enforcer, and I'll gain the 2 life. Uh, I did want to attack with it and then blink it to um, gain the life, but that's okay. Not a big deal. Um, I saved it from dying. on its. It would have di died on this upcoming turn, but instead only my serrated arrows will go to the grave. <laughs> just a, a turn too late with the Skyfisher, that would have been able to bounce the Serrated Arrows. Um, instead I can use it to bounce the Rift Watcher, I can bounce the Bog if, if necessary. Um, but you know, one turn earlier and I would have been able to keep that arrow on the field. This deck really gets power in the mid game, as you can see here, where you finally have all the mana. It's like a, you know, any control deck is, you get to that point where you have all the mana available, and once you have mana, it's game over. I'm gonna be able to draw, I'm gonna be able to like free play pretty much, and, you know, I, I can gain card advantage with this deck, no problem. So he gets the, the spell bomb, and that's not a big deal, because I have the the um, the um three toughness creatures, so I'm not real worried about it, he just sacks it to draw cards. Um, kind of a, an interesting addition, I, I'm not sure I've seen that a lot in the, the affinity decks, uh, occasionally sideboard, I guess, you will see something like that, but... Anyways, it's not going to really hurt my, my big beater's R3 toughness. So yeah, all of this this game is continuing on because my opponent back on turn 5 or 6 did not, I don't know, pay attention enough to realize that he had this game won. Um, it, it was it was pretty single-handedly in his favor. I had, I had no answer. He would have sacked all his creatures, I would have died. Um, but he didn't, I don't know, playing too cautious. I, I said this also in another video, but you really have to play a win. you got to be aggressive. Um, there there was, if you, you think about the, you know, maybe he's not familiar with this deck, but I, I could not think of a two-cost in blue and black card that would be able to prevent that from happening. Um, the only thing you would be able to do would be a kill spell in those colors, and in response to that, you could have sacked more creatures, um to do that extra damage that would have been prevented before the stack occurs. So this game's going on. I've now, as you can see with life gain, I've gone from 6 and I'm back up to 20 life. And sitting pretty, I got a Diabolic Edict, which I can use to kill off this Disciple. Um, I hold on to it just in case there's something else that comes down. I got the Mull Drifter again, creating card advantage. At this point in time, I've got so much mana that there's really nothing he can do. We are sitting with Evolving Wilds as dead cards in this deck, um, currently. But you get the Oracle out, I decide to go for the arrows because I can put that into play and use it on the Disciple, and then still have the Diabolic Edict free to use on, say, uh, an Enforcer or something else that comes down. Now, a reason I don't like this version of the deck as much is because his biggest creature is that Mirror Enforcer. And if he doesn't get those into play, or I kill those off, I'm looking at a, a deck I can handle. If I'm looking at, you know, eight mirror enforcers, or I'm looking at eight mirror enforcers plus three flying, you know, any combination of those those metal crafted creatures would have been just devastating. Alright, so I won this game. Let's take a look here real quick over at the sideboard options before I start up that second game. And again apologize, this is uh kind of freehanded. Usually I, I'm willing to edit out mistakes that I make, but um so what I got here, you're not going to put in the Dispels. The only draw he has, especially in this version, is going to be from the Thought Cast, and that's not going to be so troublesome. Um, I did bring in the Doom Blades because you need as much kill as possible. I did bring in the Diabolic Dedicts. You could technically bring in Crypt Rats, but it's not a very strong play. Uh, what I cited out was Nausea. The only thing that's going to kill is going to be the Disciples of the Vault and those Flyers, and I'm not too worried about those Flyers. Uh, the Vaults I can kill with other things, the Serrated Arrows, etc. So um, I really am more focused on killing things like the Frogmites and the Mirror Enforcers. So that's why I bring in the, the Doom Blades and the Edicts. Uh, Negate, kind of useless. Uh, most of his, his deck is creature heavy, even if it's the artifacts aren't, you know, his, his other artifacts aren't trouble. 
is what I guess I should say. The strands are useless, the dispels are useless, the hydroblast is useless. So I just bring in those those five cards. I didn't bring in the rats, though I said you could. Um, I think I also cited out a fume spitter or two. I think I brought out the prohibits, actually, because those aren't great in this matchup. There's not a lot, um, a lot of cards that will survive. Um, or will not survive, sorry, the prohibits running the, the four casts and the seven casts and stuff like that. Uh, so this was my opening hand. It was, again, it was pretty good. I got two lands, but they are both tap lands. Um, my opponent gets the start. He's got the drum. You know how it goes with affinity. I do have a missionary that I can play on turn two, so we love to see that. Um, let's see, my opponent, I don't think he gets the turn two frogmite. Oh, this is going to slow down again, so let's see if we can hit play and get this moving. Um, I, I got a lot of stuff here. I got the blink in hand. It's always nice to have the blinks early on. There's only two of them in deck, so you know if you can get those as soon as possible, that's great. Uh, now I have the, the Disciple. I could kill it with a Doom Blade, uh, but I really want to, on my next turn, um, first off, top deck a land that comes into play untapped uh, in order to play the Doom Blade, which I don't think I get. No, I don't get it. Um, so I have to use the Terramorphic to get out a land um, in order to be able to play something. And it actually works out in my favor. I think the, the Doomblade, in, in retrospect, would have been a wasted play on the Disciple. Um, probably the better play there on turn two would be to put the Missionary in play and save the Doomblade for a creature that you can't handle. Um, especially after his misplay with a Tog on Disciple. I'm thinking he he wouldn't be aware enough to do that in the second game. Um, use the the Atog win, and it it kind of works out. The Atog does come into play. Now I can kill it with the Doom Blade, and I do not have to worry about him sacking everything for the win. It's way too early for that. He's only going to be able to get through, um, you know, so much damage. So I I still want to Doom Blade it early, but it's not really as big a threat right now as say like the the Hover Guard could be. Um, now, I, I believe here I go for the Doomblade kill um, and realize that I don't have a Swamp in play, so I instead have to cast the Missionary and I put the Basilica in play so that on my following turn I will finally have that black mana that I need. Um, I don't know, everyone has stupid moves like that, I, I imagine, where you, you just kind of space for a minute. But I also open up the possibility now on the following turn I can use a plane and a planes and put a serrated arrows in play to slow down the Atog. He may sacrifice something to get an attack through with it, but it's kinda a useless play, honestly. So, you know, putting that serrated ar serrated arrows down into play would essentially have stalled out the Atog. Um, and then I could have saved the Doom Blade for later. But as you can see, I, I clearly used the Doom Blade to kill it. He uses his Spell Bomb to try and kill the Missionary, but I had the mana open to flash in the Missionary, which is the benefit to using the Doom Blade. Um, he's going to attack for four, he's got the life gain creature out, but it's not really a threat. I believe the, the Hover Guards come from his sideboard. Um, someone can feel free to correct me on that, but I believe that's a sideboard card. Not a big threat. I can easily kill it. Um, put out the Rift Watchers, um, which do work as good chump blockers. It'll die to the Hover Guard, but the Hover Guard's going down too, and I'm gaining an additional two life. Um, if he attacks with both flyers on next turn, you simply chump block with the Rift Watcher into the, the Scourge. And that's not a big deal. You're going to make sure to see again, playing aggressive, he's tapped out. I'm making sure that I hit him with my missionaries on every time. Uh, it gets off the the kill on that, and I get to use the Echoing Decay on the Hover Guard. Usually, you know, you want to save it till there's multiple targets that are going to die to it, but, you know, I'm, at this point I'm sitting pretty well, and I just want to be careful. Um, I have the 5 mana, I'm going to put the Mull Drifter into play and draw cards, so I can maybe not skip this mana drop. That would be a nice thing to do. Yep, got the land. Um, it's important, like I said, this, this deck, once it has land, is pretty, pretty tough. Uh, it can run into trouble in mid to late game against the is it control when they start capsizing your lands. Um, but if you you can keep the land on the board, then you're you're sitting pretty good. Um, I have the mole drifter in play. He's going to be able to chump block the scourge if he's stupid enough to attack into it. He comes down with another tog, and I don't know. I don't think this one is any prettier than the older one. 
just saying. So now we can throw out the Rift Watcher. Um, again, I have Grim Harvest, and I will be able to bounce some some stuff. He kills the the Mole Drifter, and I did have an opportunity to blink it, but I chose not to. I used the arrows instead to nullify the Atog like I was going to in the early game. Um, and I have the mana open to use Grim Harvest and bring back I, the Mole Drifter, I believe, is my choice, which is the right choice, I think, at this point in time. Get the hand back up. Um, yep, targeting Mole Drifter. So you get your hand back up and put together. And, um, you know, y you also have the Deep Analysis. You have the Seagate Oracle. You're sitting pretty. That's the bottom line here. Um, you can use the arrows on this turn. I kill off the, the Atog, finally. Um, and get that Aqueduct into play. And my opponent's on, on the ropes, really. He's got no cards in hand. Um, his life total doesn't show it, but he really needs to get those Thought Casts in order to build his hand back up. Once this deck loses that momentum, you're screwed. So even a lot of decks will run a single Rush of Knowledge as an additional draw spell. Um, there are some I know that run two or three even, but this one does not. Uh, and, it, and it really is his downfall as much as, you know, also his um, failing to use the Atog properly in the first game. So I have the less charge and the arrows. I get rid of the Disciple before it causes issues, before he realizes this is a mistake. Um, and then I can put out the Oracle, and I'm, you know, again, sitting pretty as far as card advantage. You know, that's really where this deck is going to pull in wins, is get mana and get that card advantage and life total up. So we're playing, we've got so many options here. Mole Drifter, Edict, Rift Watchers. There's a blink in the graveyard. There's deep analysis. Um, I decided to leave it open. I guess I, I did leave the prohibits in. Um, but those those could very easily come out. Um, actually, I, I guess they are strong in this matchup, against, especially if they're running the, the Forge versions, because those are all two-cost creatures. So yeah, maybe uh, don't take out the prohibits. Don't listen to me. I don't know what I'm talking about. Jesus. Um, so yeah, drop down the Mole Drifters, drawing cards, get an advantage. He's got no creatures, he's got no hand. Um, this game is pretty much over, um, as, as far as I'm concerned, and he will see it likewise and concede at some point here shortly. You just, you're swinging away. It's, it's going to take a little while because he's, you're swinging with these two cost and one cost creatures, but it's, it's going to go in your favor. Yeah, here we go. He concedes on turn 11. He really had nothing. He drew a card. I'm guessing he didn't find a thought cast, um, which means on his turn he would have taken five damage and been at uh, six life, and and just not not very well maintained. If it was a land, he's screwed. Um, he really needs a thought cast, and that only draws him two cards because he needs kill spells. He doesn't know it, but I mean, I'm sitting with three more creatures in hand as well as a prohibit and more card draw, so he, he just, there was nothing he could have done there. Um, the only thing he could have done was to correctly play with a Tog in game one, and take this to a game three, but because he didn't, I got the win. Um, this is, I don't want to say a tough matchup, it may be 50-50. Uh, again, it depends on the version they're running. This version, clearly, you're, you're very well off again. Um, the versions, I've seen some where they run the Forger, and the Disciple, and the Sun Chaser, and the Russian Knowledge. And that is a really tough deck to beat. Um, they get the four creatures, they get the evasion, and they can get the hand advantage. I mean, once you have a Mirror Enforcer in play, and you successfully cast Rush of Knowledge, you just refilled your hand, and um, can then continue to drop Enforcers and Drifters. Oh, Drifters, sorry. Um, enforcers and Frogmites, and replay another Rush of Knowledge. Um, it's it's really a, a tough thing to get into because they can you know drop their hand refill it drop their hand refill it over and over again, um, but most matchups I'll say it's uh it's about fifty fifty so if you're you're sitting across from Affinity well let's just uh hope it's this version. <laughs>